I hope everybody's doing okay out there. I know 2020 has been kind of a crazy year so far, and I really hope everybody's doing okay. I just wanted to show you all a couple of things I found here I thought you might be able to use in your rod building stuff. Now, I don't know if these will work for what I think they'll work for because I haven't tried them myself yet. So I'm going to give these a shot and just record it, see what happens. They'll either be a, a pass or a fail, I guess. This is a cuticle remover and pusher. It's hard to see, and I probably won't be able to get this on camera, but there's a V shape on the end of this tool, and it looks to be very sharp on the inside. And I can't really see the backside that well in the package. What I'm hoping is that on the backside it's flat. I'm thinking you might be able to use this for cutting tag ends, and I'm gonna try that and see if that will work. And this is a gel polish remover tool, and both of these were found over in the nail polish and makeup stuff in the Dollar Tree. They were a dollar a piece, of course. And what this looks to me like, it's got a little bit of a scoop out here. It's kind of a, almost a spoon shape. And I thought you might be able to use this for a few different things. That spoon shape, if you like to put epoxy on with a metal tool, you could dip with that and get quite a bit at once on the end of that tool and place and spread the epoxy really well that way, I think. And if it's polished enough and it doesn't have any burrs or anything on it, it might be a good candidate to use for pushing thread and the back side of it might be good for burnishing thread also. So I'll just try these out on camera, see how they work out, and you can decide if you want to try them for yourself or not. If they don't work at all, then I'll mention that. But I thought I'd give these a shot and see what y'all think about it. So all I've done here is just get a wrap started. I intentionally left it a little lacking on the tightness and, and things like that. I thought that would give me a good opportunity to try this gel polish remover tool and see if I might be able to use it to move the threads around it all. I'm just going to take a look at it here. And it's actually pretty smooth. I don't feel any burrs on it or anything. And like most of this stuff you find at Dollar Tree that I'm sure it comes from China, most of this stuff, the quality control is not all that great on it. So, you know, you might have to polish or wet sand a little bit on one if it's got a burr or a nick on it. But this one feels pretty good. So you can kind of see there's a little bit of a dip in it. So that would be good for dipping epoxy out and putting it on and spreading it with the back side of that. It looks like I might be able to use this too for manipulating threads. So I'll just give it a shot here and push these threads over and try to get everything lined up. So that looks like that works pretty well, actually. Now, the back side of this should be good for burnishing also. Again, you want to make sure there aren't any nicks or anything on it, but you should be able to burnish your threads out with this, too. I'll try that when I get a little further along here on this wrap. I'll go ahead and straighten this end up a little bit, adjust my angle here on my thread. And you can see I got a little gap going right here. I'll just see if I can burnish that out with this. That worked just fine. So that looks like a good candidate for a tool right there. So you might want to check around to see if you can find one. I'm going to try to cut that tag in with this cuticle remover. I'll see if I can get it up here where you can see what I was talking about. You see how in the right in that groove right there, it appears to be sharpened pretty well. 
and the back side doesn't feel too grabby. I think that might work. Let's try it and see what happens anyway. So I think you should be able to just put this tool on the thread and put the thread in that little V notch and butt it up to it right there. And I'm just going to hold the tool to keep it from moving and see if I can cut through it. All right, well, that did cut it, but you can see what happened here. I got a little bit into my finish on that. I can fix that later, but I was just seeing what that would do. So I think the problem with that is where it comes to the V point is sharp. And although that will get flat against there, that could cause you some problems. I'm not sure I'd recommend using that. Let me go ahead and just wrap up a little on this and I will pull the thread under and see if I can cut with the tool on the thread itself and not let it move. That's gonna be the tricky part is not letting it move around. If you can hold it perfectly straight and flat, I think it would be all right, but if you slip it all with it, you're going to have a problem. And I guess the same thing is true for a razor blade if you're using a razor blade. I typically don't use a razor blade. I usually cut my thread um, short enough to where I can pull it completely under and at an angle so it completely covers. I'll put a link up here in the top right hand corner to a video where I talk about that a little bit. And I did a video about that and maybe uh, you'd like that method like I do. All right, so I'm just gonna pull this completely through, which I normally do not do. I'm gonna do it on this just to try this tool out. All right. So I've got that through. Now I'm gonna to try to hold this now with my right hand because I have, I'm right-handed and I get a lot better results usually when I do things with my right hand. And I'm gonna pull that thread. Now, that actually worked really well. This might be one of those types of tools where you can get good results with it if you practice with it some, but I definitely use caution with that because you can for sure cut your finish with it. It's where it comes down to that point right there. It's just, it just catches right there. And I think it's because it comes to so much of a point that it can scratch. So that's something to be aware of if you want to try one of these. If you do, I would practice on, on a blank that you don't care about or even on a fiberglass dowel type rod like you see on garage sale signs or something like that to get the hang of it because I think this one would take a little practice in order to keep you from doing any damage with it. But as you can see, that cut that off extremely well there in the wrap so now I'm going to try this other tool again and just kind of tighten my wrap up and see if I can burnish it out with this just straighten that up just a little there I'm not going for perfection here just doing some experimentation and I got a little bit of a gap in this area. I'll see if I can burnish that out. Yeah, that works pretty well. Yeah, I would call this one, I'd say this one's a, a go on that one. It's pretty good. The finish on it is not polished but it's got a good finish on it, if that makes sense. It, if I drag my fingernail across it, it 
feels it feels smooth, but it's not polished. But I think it's smooth enough where you shouldn't have any problems with it fraying your thread or anything like that. It's got a pretty good profile to it where you could come up with a lot of uses for that, I think. That kind of dipped out area there, you can use it for pushing on your ends to even those up. Use the backside for burnishing, and it'd really make a good tool for dipping epoxy out. So I'd say that's a go on that one for a dollar. I think you can't go wrong on that. This one, if you can use it with your good hand, which is my right hand, and keep it on the threads, and actually, I think, you know, you, if you've got it over here on the side, you'd get some slippage. I wouldn't keep it anywhere on my rod blank. I'd try to keep it on the thread itself. And if you could rock that pointed end up just a hair so it's not sitting and digging into the thread, but just rock it up just a little bit. I don't know if you can see that. To get that pointed part off and hold it firmly, you can cut your tag ends with that. I think I would use this, but I don't know that I'd recommend somebody else use it. There's occasions where I do pull through and cut my tags. Normally I don't. Normally I just cut them short. But every once in a while there's an occasion where that seems like the better way to go about doing something. But I mean that cut that flush. There was nothing sticking out. There's no nibs <laughs> there. Nothing to hit with the lighter or anything. It really cut that off well. I could see where this might have some potential uses, so I'll definitely hang on to it for myself. I don't know, especially if you're just getting started, that I'd recommend it to just anyone. It definitely will cut thread. Now this is a thicker thread I'm using. This is actually an upholstery type thread, and it's a nylon, and it's thicker than what I typically use. That would have cut something thinner like I normally use a lot easier. I normally use machine embroidery thread and then I just use a water-based color protecting over it to make sure that there's nothing going to cause me any problems with my finish. That embroidery thread is really thin. It's actually thinner than size A rod building thread. This stuff is thick and I mean it's heavy. It would be more akin to a size D thread and it will cut that but it takes a little bit of pulling force to get it to cut. I think a razor blade would probably be your better option on something like that. But if you're using some lighter threads, this cut really clean and did a good job. But you do run the risk of scratching your blank. Of course, if you slip with a razor blade, you can do that too. So that's something you always want to be careful of. But I guess I'll give this one a definitely pass. I think a lot of people could get a lot of use out of a tool like this. I would just check the edges, make sure that there's no burrs or anything in the metal. It appears to be stainless steel. It's probably a low-grade stainless steel, but good enough for rod building purposes. I think you can see that the finish is not polished on this. It's just it's kind of a rough finish. It's not perfect, but it's not rough to the touch, but it's not polished mirror smooth either. So that looks like a good possibility for a tool for you for a dollar from the Dollar Tree store. And this one, you know, if you want to try it out for yourself, I'd practice on something you don't mind messing up. And once you get the hang of it, I think this could be a useful tool for some people too. But I'm not so sure I'd just recommend it to somebody, especially if they're just getting started out and don't have a good feel for things. This might cause them some problems. So that's all I got. I hope y'all enjoyed it. and. If y'all like these types of videos, I don't mind doing them when I run across something unusual like that. I thought it, somebody might want to see it. If you like these kind of videos, it'd help me out if you just leave a comment below. That would give me an idea if this was useful or not to some people. But I thought I'd just go ahead and do this one real quick. Again, I hope everybody's doing okay out there. And I'll talk to y'all later.